I wanted to talk about May, December, which I think we all saw. I'm curious. I think we should first hear, because yeah, I think all of it. our thoughts are pretty yeah, similar. I'm probably, curious yeah. what Sean's, Sean, yeah, what Sean's Sean thoughts are on that movie. So I thought it had um, amazing performances. I think there's a great idea in there, but I felt like they took a totally tone deaf direction on where to take the story in particular, because it's, it's based on something real. Yeah. And so when you kind of yeah. pick this dark comedy um, with this overbearing, bizarre score, like the, the score for the movie is literally pulled from a movie from 1971. Did you like no. it? Um, I, I, did you like it? The score? The piano song? No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, no, no, no one did. Yeah. Nobody did. Yeah. It, like, and from the very beginning of the movie, you're like, this is way over the top. Like, what is this? Why is this so overbearing? And yeah. then it does like the boom. She opens the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. The volume goes like 10 dogs. decibels yeah. higher. We don't have enough hot dogs. Yeah. And, and it's, it's <laughs> funny in a sense, but at the same time, like it was when, when you're diving into a story that this is a real person's life. Yeah. Or multiple so, people's real story. lives. Um, and children that their lives were ruined. One of the, the people in this is the dad and then the kids that they had out of this, their lives are tainted by something. And so then picking the direction of the story to focus in on an actress's obsession and yeah. not being able to draw the line between pre prepping for a role and engaging in the, like, I, it's like, this is, uh, that's the, where my the focus of the story. The focus of this movie needed to be on the the melted, yeah. like his his coming to realization through this process. And it's in there, but it, it's like <laughs> it's like Hidden. the third most important thing. And you're like, that's the movie. That's the that's like because this is real. That's what this needs to be about. Not about an actress and her obsession. Yeah, like that method. Yeah. Like, yeah, like that's. I don't understand why we've picked that. And I don't think a dark comedy and I know some people calling it camp, some people saying it's offensive to call it camp, like the conversation around the bizarre. Too, yeah, it's but. weird. So it's yeah. like a movie that there is something in there that I think could have been really great. And I think they just they went down the wrong path. Yeah. yeah, I honestly got to the end of the movie and I was just I was very left. Oh, what's the word? I felt, I honestly felt confused in a lot of ways because of the way they, like you said, the route they took. I just, I, I finished it off and I was like, I got nothing out of this. Like it felt so surface level, the story idea. And like you said, what they did with Natalie Portman's character, I was just like, this doesn't feel like, like it wasn't what I expected at all. I expected what you were saying. I thought this was going to be more of a movie about the family this this young old relationship and how that was going to play out and it just had nothing to do with that and you could tell they were trying to still make it about that but at the same time it was heavily about natalie portman's care it just didn't seem to work for me i don't know it lost yeah. me a few times and when it's based on a real story and you have scenes yeah. in the movie where she's getting lost in the role and she's like i don't know these 13 year olds aren't sexy enough but yeah. on the one hand, that's funny because it's so inappropriate and it's so detached that she's saying like, yeah. there's something like, that's funny. But it's like you just step back one step and you go, but we're talking about a real thing, in which case that's not funny anymore to me. It's like no. you're, you're just picking the wrong path. Yeah. And Agreed. like I think it feels like these should be two different things. If you want to do this story about Natalie Portman getting too invested, there's something to that because it's a critique of Hollywood. Sure. Yeah, um, it then is. again, Tropic Thunder already exists and they already <laughs> roasted Hollywood about their ridiculous behavior. But like, yeah. you could do that, but you separate it. You don't make it about a real thing. Yeah. And yeah. I think by doing that, it, it made the movie very odd. It was just like. I, I, yeah. I just can't, yeah, I, can't connect with it. I thought Natalie Portman was great. And then yep. Julianne Moore was was good. And then Charles Melton, I thought he was fine. I know a lot of people are saying like it's crazy are Oscar worthy. Yeah. And I was like, I, I don't I don't know about that. But I mean, yeah, that's, I guess the that's praise the praise was crazy. Like, I don't know. Went through Letterboxd yeah. reviews, went through audience scores on Rotten Oscar. Tomatoes. Everyone was saying, yeah, like like best performance, like one of the best performances of the yeah. year and stuff. I just didn't feel he did that anything special. My opinion. Yeah. Until the end yeah. of the movie, he did his best work. 
But before that, I yeah, that, yeah, that one scene with Julianne better. Moore, yeah, when they he's like, I don't know if we love each other anymore. I thought that was yeah, a good scene for him. It was. But other than that, I feel like he was just flat tone or straight face of most of the movie as well. But they didn't give him enough, I feel like, to be Oscar worthy. Right. And, and on the one hand, that like that's the whole idea of the role. But that's when you're trying to like Oscar best of the year. That's yeah. like you think like transforming that you're constantly yeah. doing something in like Yes. highly difficult so like like you're talking about natalie portman where she does the the monologue in the mirror yeah, yeah. and so she it's this Great one scene. long take and you just watch her emotional path yep. on that that is a highly skilled thing yes that very to be able to pull that off you have to be way up here yep and that's what you think best performance. You think this, you know, that yeah. scene is very much like, all right, here's the clip to submit for your Oscar. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, it, and, and you should. The same thing. Um, but kind of like, that, of course, you know, you're not surprised that Natalie Portman can act. The guy from no. Coverdale, yeah. you are surprised that like, oh, he's holding his own. He did a good job. So I don't know if it's that, like, I think a great underdog story. CW actor can really act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, might be that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, not a fan. I, I think I, for the story too, the story, it kept me interested to see what was yeah. going to happen. But yeah. again, again, I just felt empty at the end. I was just like, it didn't no. satisfy what I wanted to see or anything like that. It, yeah. it kept me interested, but then at the end, just let me down miserably. So I just yeah, can't believe how much of a hot take it became. Like, I didn't think it would be such a hot take, but it's like right. the reviews yeah. love it. Yeah. And people, most love people it. connected with it. So I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's like a movie designed for film Twitter. <laughs> It's just it like they're just oh. offbeat enough and, and it has the sort of things in it that lend themselves well to the snarkiness of film Twitter to where, you know, I saw a tweet that was like, there's two types of people in the world, people that love the score to May, December and those that don't get it. And it's like, don't get it. What? Like, oh, my it, it, it's like th it's that sort of thing where it's like snarky, condescending. Yeah. And it's a movie filled with stuff where it's like, I mean, it was so deep and layered and like so these characters <laughs> are so complex because, you know, it's like. Uh, it's not that we yeah. didn't get it. Yeah, that yeah. was weird. That was weird. It was weird. And it's like, well, it was, it, was intense. it was it was supposed to make you uncomfortable because there's a disconnect between what you're seeing and what you're feeling. I'm like, no, <laughs> when these guys saw it before me and they brought it up, they said, you're going to hate the music. So I, I, I didn't even know what to expect when that first note hit. I like felt, I was like, Whoa. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So you see, you can look it up. Um, but it, yeah. it, it's, it, it is the score from this movie from 1971 where the director used it to like, as like a temp track and he took, went to the composer and he went, I, I think I just like this. So it's oh not gosh. even that there was like a disconnect and it was like, hey, can you run with this? Something. It was literally, I love this in my movie. <laughs> that was 100% what he was going for. And that's yeah, crazy. Well, I get, we didn't get it. It's, it's that's it. We just didn't get it. We're not, yeah, I didn't understand it. Yeah. We're not, we're not there. Yeah. <laughs> I was afraid. Yeah. Just don't get it. Never will. <laughs> <laughs>